The following is a presentation of TFNN. Let's go to our uh, first call of the day. We'll talk to John in Austin, Texas. How are you doing today, John? Way too good, Ken. I know I'm um, like a lot of listeners. We thank you so, so much for uh, helping us to earn money in the market. And, and Mr. O'Brien also, and what you all do at TFNN, it is absolutely huge. Appreciate it very much. All the best to you and your family, man. I'm telling you, we so appreciate what you're doing. You do such a great job. This show is fantastic every day. Uh, you're a good man, John. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Live at TFNN, Breakout Investing with your host, Ken Shreve. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Tuesday to you all. Welcome to another edition of Breakout Investing on TFNN, five days a week now, 3 to 4 Eastern. If you want to give me a call, please do so, 877-927-6648. Have a question about a stock, have a question about underlying market health. Whatever you want to talk about, 877-927-6648. If you can't listen to the show live, don't worry. You can head over to iTunes and pick it up as a podcast. Feel free to leave a review if you like. And you can listen to all TFNN programming on your smartphone. If you're out and about, plug those earbuds in. Open your smartphone browser type in tfnn.mobi and you can listen to the stream that way as well and don't forget to check out tiger tv on the home page of tfnn.com the show is carried live on channel one it is archived on channel 13 and with tiger tv not only can you hear the audio of the show but you can also look at charts live right along with me We'll start by taking a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, holding up pretty well, considering we're seeing some selling in the financial sector late in the day here. Let's go ahead and refresh this chart. We'll see that the Dow is up about 106 points, eight-tenths of a percent, to 13,530. 13,530 last on the uh, Dow Jones, you can see. Supporting action so far at its 50-day moving average, and the same thing for the S&P 500. It uh, found support at its 50-day moving average yesterday. It is extending gains today by the same percentage as the Dow, up about uh, 12 points, eight tenths of a percent to 1452. Uh, we do have a little bit of volume in the market today. Not great, but it is tracking higher than what we saw on Monday, about 10% higher on the New York Stock Exchange, also 10% higher on the NASDAQ. Uh, volume pretty light yesterday, surprise, surprise, uh, 613 million shares on the New York Stock Exchange, 1.53 billion on the NASDAQ, so tracking about 10% higher uh, so far. So you have a mild accumulation day in the market. That is uh, good to see. Let's uh, check in on the NASDAQ composite here. Tech stocks up, uh, let's see, about 30 and a half points, 1% to 3,095. Look at that 50-day moving average, 3,094. 3,094. So the NASDAQ composite trying to get back above its 50-day moving average. Uh, hopefully it will... Um, it will be able to, to do that, and you know we'll see the NASDAQ gain a little bit of uh, steam today. Uh, good day for Apple. Let's check in on shares of Apple. It is outperforming nicely, up 2.1% to 648.27. Not out of the woods yet, because you can see its 50-day moving average is at 661. So Apple... Still about uh, 13 points underneath what could be a resistance level. Anytime a growth stock like Apple undercuts the 50-day moving average by a fair amount, which Apple did, as it starts to work its way higher, uh, sometimes what was once support turns into resistance. So not sure if that's going to play out fully with Apple, but... Um, you know, we'll keep an eye on that 50-day moving average at 661. Uh, shares of Apple recently trading around 648.27. A little bit of news on uh, Apple today. Initially, it was thought uh, October 17th was going to be the date where uh, Apple would introduce uh, a smaller version of its uh, iPad. It uh, officially is going to be one week later on October 23rd. Apple uh, sent out an invite uh, today. 
So that press event is going to be October 23rd. And again, it's uh, widely expected to introduce a smaller version of the iPad. Uh, many are calling the iPad Mini. Might have a 7.85 inch display. The cost uh, anywhere between 199 and 299. Uh, could go on sale by early November. So uh, Apple showing signs of life here, resulting in some outperformance for uh, tech stocks today. Uh, again, financials under pressure today after hitting an intraday high of 1616. The financial select sector spider ETF is trading pretty much at its session low here at 1605, up six cents on the day. Uh, news of the day, Vikram Pandit out as CEO of Citigroup. Very strange timing here. Citigroup comes out with what many analysts called a uh, outstanding earnings report uh, yesterday. We'll see. Uh, Citigroup had a had a big day. It uh, it's hanging in there, up another fifteen cents today to thirty six eighty one. Uh, it hit an intraday low of thirty six twenty five. So uh, the news of Vikram Pandit's uh, departure not really affecting shares of Citigroup uh, too much. Pandit is going to be replaced by Michael Corbett as uh, CEO. Corbett had been the uh, head of uh, Citigroup's Europe, Middle East. Africa business. According to the Wall Street Journal, Pandant left after a clash with the board, uh, with the, which was frustrated apparently with Citigroup's, the performance of Citigroup's institutional client unit. Um, this uh, story has been, you know, out there all day. Vikram Pandit in an interview said that the decision to leave was his own. And again, the news really isn't uh, affecting the stock uh, too much. I think uh, Vikram Pandit's uh, relationship with the board at Citigroup has been, shall we say, tumultuous over the past uh, several months, and um, I actually kind of believe him when he says it's his uh, decision. I'm not sure he was uh, forced out, but I think he just got um, tired of uh, butting heads with Citigroup's uh, board. So uh, don't forget about the presidential debate tonight. It's going to be a town hall-style debate hosted by CNN's Candy uh, Crowley. And uh, the latest Gallup poll today shows Mitt Romney with a four-point lead over Barack Obama among likely voters, up from two points a week ago. Romney leads uh, Obama among likely voters 50% to 46%. A week ago, the uh, Massachusetts governor, or former Massachusetts governor, led the president 49% to 47%. So uh, sort of do or die time for President Obama. Many called his uh, performance in the first debate uh, a bit lackluster. Uh, I would uh, tend to agree Mitt Romney was uh, very prepared and uh, had a very solid showing in his uh, first debate. So I'm sure we'll see a different President Obama this time uh, around. Take a look at shares of uh, Amazon, A-M-Z-N. Good news for the uh, workforce. Amazon said today that it plans to hire more than 50,000 seasonal workers for the upcoming holiday season. Amazon is one of these uh, growth stocks. You know, you've got a lot of growth stocks out there that are still holding above their 50-day moving averages. Uh, that's a good sign. Then you've got other big leaders like Amazon that uh, broke below the 50-day line last week, still trading underneath. Uh, you know, a Apple is in that group. We'll take a look at eBay in uh, just a minute. But Amazon continues to trade under its 50-day moving average. It's uh, it's down five out of the past uh, six trading sessions. Uh, shares not participating in the market rally today, down 53 cents to 243. 65. Uh, that's the last on Amazon. So it looks a little vulnerable here. After a big run up uh, for Amazon and a lot of growth stocks really since uh, the market rally started in uh, July, a lot of these stocks are just going to build uh, bases. Some are going to build proper bases. They're going to start to t retest their former highs and you could see uh, new uh, breakouts. So we'll see if uh, Amazon can put in a, a floor here maybe start uh, heading higher. But again, that, that uh, potential of that 50-day moving average at 248, 249 being resistance for Amazon uh, could be an issue just like it could be an issue for uh, Apple as well. So Amazon looking a little uh, tired here. Uh, another industry group not participating in the market rally today are the uh, home builders. ITB is uh, it's up two cents. I actually thought it would be down looking at uh, some of the home builders out there. But ITB is uh, up 
two cents to twenty dollars even. The uh, top holding in uh, ITB is uh, Lennar. Let's check in on shares of Lennar. We'll see that it has. Um, recovered earlier losses and is now trading up 21 cents to 37.26. So it looks like a lot of these home builders came uh, have rallied nicely off their lows. Lennar hit an intraday low of 36.42, uh, now up six tenths of a percent on the day. Second highest weighted stock in the ITB is D.R. Horton, D.H.I. We'll see that D.R. Horton is trading down seven cents to 2059 and finally PHM this is uh, Pulte Group Pulte Group up just a little bit up 12 cents to 1652 so tell you what these home builders even though they are extended in price they uh, uh, are not showing anything in the way of sell signals you can see they're all holding above their 50-day moving average uh, still under accumulation doesn't mean I want to buy them up here because they have run uh, quite a bit and I'd like to see them consolidate gains for a while longer, but uh, their relative price strength is still uh, it has been impressive. Some economic data earlier today, not much, but we did have the latest reading on consumer prices. Uh, overall, CPI up six tenths of a percent, a little bit hotter than expected. The estimate was for uh, a half a percent gain. Core rate up one tenth of one percent. The estimate was two, a two tenths of a percent gain. So, um, not much news in the consumer price index on the earnings front. Uh, WD40, WDFC, they reported earnings after the close yesterday. Tough day for. WD40, the stock is down 6.7% to 47.61, came gapped below its 50-day moving average, is trading, uh, went down to its 200-day moving average at 46.26, but is trading in the middle half of its uh, range right now, still holding the 200-day moving average, but the results were very, very weak at WD40. This is a uh, company, of course, known for its namesake lubricant, WD40. It also makes other cleaning products. Uh, earnings down 8% from a year ago to 56 cents a share. That was 14 cents below the consensus estimate of 70 cents. Sales down 6% to 84.8 million, also well below the consensus estimate of 93.7 uh, million. Sales in the Americas rose 1% but fell 17% in Europe. So Europe was the big uh, big problem for WD40. On the other hand, a bright spot in earnings, we've got Domino's Pizza, DPZ, bullish gap up for the stock today, up 7.4% to 41.07. You know, talking to some, uh, I, it's, I'm amazed the number of people that don't know that Domino's is a publicly traded uh, company. But uh, they've actually been a, a, a strong performing stock, and uh, you know, big performance today, up two dollars and eighty-three cents to forty-one oh seven. The uh, news at Domino's e earnings up twenty-three percent to forty-three cents a share, two cents above views. Sales were flat at three hundred and seventy-eight one point three hundred and seventy-eight point one million, but that was above expectations. Same store sales up three point three percent in the U.S., five percent internationally. Great numbers from Domino's. We'll be right back, folks. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 80% of traders fail because they don't know when to get in or out of a market, and all because no one taught them how to read the signs. You see, the stock market has a universal language called Japanese candlesticks, and each day, the buyers and sellers, the bulls and bears, go to work and build signs. This language has been around for thousands of years, and it's easy to learn. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters Show, and I'm a master sign builder. Download my free report, Candlesticks, The Speed of Trust, on the homepage of TFNN.com for one of the best-kept candlestick secrets. I'll also be conducting an online course Friday, October 19th, to teach you the language of the market's sign builders. You'll learn the best entry and exit techniques and strategies that will create extraordinary rewards. The course will be archived so you can review it as many times as you like because trading or investing without learning this language is like running a red light. It's an accident waiting to happen and there's no airbags or seatbelts. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing. Today is Tuesday. That means the latest update to my Ultimate Growth Stocks newsletter went out to subscribers earlier today. I update the letter every Tuesday, and I send out email buy and sell alerts uh, in between for the Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio. If uh, I am not doing any buying or selling, I will also send out uh, intraday market updates as well. So if you want to check out 30 days absolutely free of ultimate growth stocks you can do that right on the home page of tfnn.com click on the newsletters tab then investment newsletters and you can read all about uh, ultimate growth stocks you'll also see in the breaking news area on the home page try out ultimate uh, growth stocks also on the home page while you're there uh, don't forget to sign up for the great panther silver halloween giveaway uh, TFNN and Great Panther Silver will give away 27 pieces of silver for Halloween from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern on October 29th, 30th, and 31st. So be sure to check out uh, that offer on the homepage of TFNN.com. You can register uh, for free for your chance 
to win. Um, mentioned the departure of Citigroup CEO Vikram Pandant. We also had a couple of financial earnings reports to ponder earlier today. Goldman Sachs. Uh, look at the reversal in Goldman Sachs after hitting an intraday high of 125.97. The stock has reversed in heavy volume. Bearish price action for Goldman now down a dollar 99, 1.6 percent to 122.51. The uh, Goldman made $2.85 a share. That was well above the consensus estimate of $2.12 a share. Uh, CEO Lloyd Blankfein called the quarter, quote, generally solid in the context of a still challenging economic environment. Uh, in the quarter, Goldman shed about 1,600 jobs, or 5% of its workforce. We also had earnings from Coca-Cola. Let's check in on shares of Coke here. Rough day for Coke. Look at that 50-day moving average. Has been a resistance level for the stock since uh, September, uh, pretty much. So it, it is uncanny how when a stock falls underneath that support level, it can turn into resistance. I do talk about it a lot, but you can make some very educated uh, investment decisions by watching how a stock trades around that key moving average. But uh, repeated resistance at the 50-day line for Coca-Cola, uh, it is down 1% today to 37.74. Earnings uh, came in at 51 cents a share, down 2% from a year ago. Sales up 1% to 12.3 billion. Uh, Coke continues to expand in emerging markets. Uh, company did well in India. Overall sales volume rose 15% there. In the U.S., uh, Coke continues to do well with its sports, sports drinks and uh, teas. Taking a look at crude oil. $92.09 a barrel, the official settle on Tuesday, up $0.24 cents on the day. Um, let's take a look at shares of Murphy Oil, M-U-R. That stock was in the uh, news today. Murphy Oil up nicely, 7.8% to 63.60. On news, it's uh, going to spin off its U.S. refining and marketing unit into a separate publicly traded uh, company. Uh, Murphy also plans to pay a special dividend of $2.50 a share and also buy back $1 billion in stock. So positive uh, headlines around Murphy Oil today, taking a look at gold, uh, settles at $1,746.30 an ounce, up $8.70 on the day. The GLD with uh, almost a half hour left to go in Tuesday's session, up 92 cents, a little more, about six tenths of a percent to 169.27. The GLD continues to hold comfortably above its 50-day moving average around 166, so trading a little more than three points above its 50-day line. U.S. dollar index at 79.39, down 35 ticks, so uh, weakness in the dollar helping the market Today, the yield on the 10-year note up 6 ticks to 1.72%. 30-year bond up 8 ticks to 2.92% as money comes out of bonds and into stocks today. Uh, probably see a VIX that is sharply lower today. And the VIX, it is actually trading near its uh, session high after early weakness. It is a down uh, 10 ticks right now to 15.17 after hitting an intraday low of 14.50. Um, so it is uh, trading up near its session high. I would have thought the uh, VIX would have been uh, a little weaker today considering uh, the rally in the market. So when we come back, folks, we'll check in on the indexes again. A lot of stocks out there. You look at their weekly charts, finding good support at the 10-week moving average. I think this is compelling. Not ready to aggressively start buying here. The market needs to prove itself more, but day two of a rally attempt looking pretty good. We'll be right back. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a 
a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. TFNN and Great Panther Silver have teamed up for another exciting silver giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Halloween giveaway will be taking place at the end of October, and for three full days, we'll be giving away silver coins and bars every hour from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. to one lucky winner randomly chosen. There's no purchase necessary. For more information and to fill out your registration form today, simply visit the front page of TFNN.com where you'll find all the details. October 29th, 30th, and 31st, we'll choose one lucky lucky winner that will receive a silver coin or bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver. Winners will be announced live on the air each hour for three full days. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to win free silver from TFNN and Great Panther Silver. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex, symbol GPL, or on the Toronto Stock Exchange, symbol GPR. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about tactical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to uh, Breakout Investing on TFNN. Checking in on the NASDAQ Composite here with about 25 minutes left to go in Tuesday's session. Up near its session high, 1.1% gain for the tech index to 3,097. You see it's trying like heck to get back above that 50-day moving average. Uh, successful so far, it is a little more than three points above the 50-day uh, line at this point. So risk on trade, definitely uh, in full effect uh, today. That's a, a good thing, especially for a uh, growth stock portfolio like uh, Ultimate Growth Stocks. S&P 500 also up near its session high, up nine-tenths of a percent to 1452. And the Dow, Dow Jones Industrial Average, up 104 points, eight-tenths of a percent to 13,520. 
eight. So all in all, not too bad a day for the market. I think it's a little too early to get uh, excited here. We are in the early stages of a rally attempt. You can see for the Dow, it is the third day of a rally attempt for that index. Uh, for the S&P 500 and NASDAQ, I believe it is just day two of a rally attempt. That means sometime between, well, preferably on Thursday or Friday this week, if we can get one more big percentage gain, uh, percentage gains like this are good, but not uh, not good enough. I'm talking about a you know one and a half, two percent gain either Thursday or Friday, or maybe sometime next week where volume comes in higher than the prior session. That would be legitimate follow through, and I would you know be more willing to start putting uh, money back to work again in the model portfolio. I have several uh, holdings, like I've been saying in recent shows, that have held up nicely uh, during the recent market decline. Uh, very few broke support, so I held on to them. Some of my gains. Uh, Percentage gains got a little smaller, but I wanted to give them a chance to work. Uh, many are firming up on a daily chart. They're finding support at the 50-day moving average. On a weekly chart, they're finding support at the 10-week uh, moving average. And that can be an opportunity to add uh, to a position. So if I've got you know, 500 shares of a stock and I want to uh, average up and... Uh, increase the weighting in the portfolio. I'm not going to buy another 500 shares of that stock. I may buy 200 or, or 300 shares just to keep my average cost basis in uh, check. So I, I will will do that, but I want to see the market prove itself a, a bit more. Two straight days of gains for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ aren't enough to make me uh, fully believe that this uh, that the market could be ready to uh, start moving higher here again. It's uh, it's possible. I do think there is so much negativity over third quarter earnings season that, uh, in other words, bearish sentiment got so extreme when it can, comes to quarterly earnings, um, it's possible that the market could do the opposite of what a lot of people uh, are expecting here. And uh, if the results that are expected to be bad turn out to be you know, good or pretty good, you know, we could we could see more gains in the major averages here. That has not fully played out yet. Uh, uh, right now, I'm uh, confident about the rally, but um, not fully uh, convinced. Take a look at some other uh, movers today. Uh, here is a name that someone brought to my attention, Fortune Brands. Home and security. Interesting technical setup here. The stock is outperforming today up 2.1% to 27.82. This is a uh, company that provides home security, kitchen and bath, tool storage products for the home building market. Earnings are due October 23rd after the close. Uh, the company is expected to earn 25 cents a share, up 32% from a year ago. Sales up 6% to just under 900 uh, million. Fortune Brands, uh, its products include Master Lock and Moen Faucets. But in a nice uh, setup here, holding above its 50-day moving average, got some resistance up here around 29 uh, that you can see. But uh, like the technical setup here, this one, uh, this one could work if. Uh, if the market uh, continues to work here. Fortune Brands Home and Security, FBHS. Let's take a look at shares of eBay. eBay is another one of these uh, big leaders that looks a little uh, vulnerable here, although to its credit, so yesterday it kind of had a wild day of trading, closed in the middle half of its trading range. It is up 1.8% today to 48.27. A lot of optimism about what this company is going to have to say tomorrow after the close. Of course, the, the big growth driver for eBay at this point is its PayPal uh, unit. In the second quarter, three months ago, the unit processed over $34 billion worth of transactions, up 20% from a year ago. Most likely we'll see big numbers from the PayPal unit again. Um, overall, earnings at eBay are expected to be up 15% to $0.55 cents a share, with sales also up 15% to $3.4 billion. So eBay under a little bit of selling pressure since the middle of September thereabouts and uh, you know, starting to, to work its way higher, most likely in anticipation of strong results Wednesday after the close. Uh, another company reporting Wednesday after the close, Mellanox Technologies. This one is looking a little tired to me. Uh, big 
uh, quarter of growth is expected, but you can see Mellanox has been trading underneath its 50-day moving average for uh, some time now. It is not participating in the market rally today. Uh, up near its session high to its credit, but still down 24 cents to 104.13 based in Israel. Mellanox is a uh, fabulous chip company, basically a chip designer that supplies interconnect products for computing uh, storage and communication applications. Earnings expected to be up 265% from a year ago to $1.13 a share. Uh, equally impressive sales growth up 125% to $1.53.1 million. No doubt we will see strong growth from this company. A lot of uh, Mellanox bulls out there price and volume trends in its daily chart look a little bit suspect. Uh, let's leave it at that. Uh, later this week, uh, before the open on Thursday, let's check in on shares of Morgan Stanley. Uh, pretty decent technical setup here. Morgan Stanley up 13 cents, pretty much in line with the market today, up 7 tenths of a percent to 17.88. Got some resistance for Morgan Stanley at around 18.50, but uh, again, company where if you do get better than expected results, which is certainly not out of the question, could see a breakout take shape over its uh, recent high around 1850. So Morgan Stanley looking pretty good ahead of earnings Thursday before the open. And I mentioned Polaris Industries as well on uh, yesterday's show. Let's uh, check in on shares of Polaris up uh, working on a four session winning streak here up another nine tenths of a percent today to 85 40 and uh, Polar Pol Polaris, which makes uh, all terrain recreational vehicles, uh, utility vehicles, snowmobiles, uh, things like that, um, uh, you know, could, could see a breakout here over 86 uh, take shape. So, market uh, expecting good numbers from Polaris, and Polaris is no stranger to delivering uh, strong growth. It uh, has shows very consistent growth in uh, recent quarters and a well run company, no doubt about it. Haven't checked in on shares of Catamaran Corporation, CTRX. Another interesting technical setup here. You can see the number of decent looking charts out there. Yeah, some market leaders have been under pressure, but you got a lot of stocks kind of flexing their muscle, making a case they want to be uh, leaders going forward uh, in order for them to be leaders and to continue higher. You know, it's going to help to have kind of buyers coming into the major averages. So Catamaran today outperforming nicely, up three and a quarter percent to 5174. This is a provider of pharmacy benefit management uh, services. Earlier this year in July, the company acquired Catalyst Health Solutions for nearly five uh, billion dollars. Uh, Catamaran Corporation uh, recently changed its name. It used to be known as SXC Health Solutions, but this is an um, uh, interesting name out there, and I think I have a, a chart daily chart saved for catamaran here it is we'll see the swing point of 52.28 so flirting with a potential breakout here not out of the question um, you know I like to buy relative price tricks so if I see good technical setups out there I see stocks that are building bases consolidating gains uh, maybe you know for several weeks uh, bases like this are definitely worth paying attention to uh, but again I see just as many if not more stocks out there that broke out in July, August, September that are coming down to their 10 week moving average for the uh, first time. So that can present uh, entry points uh, as well. Again, I'm probably seeing more of the latter than the former, although CTRX is one of the few stocks out there that is actually um, it, making a case it's going to try to break out from a, a nice long base here. So we'll see if that materializes for uh, Catamaran. Let's take a look at CVLT, name we've talked about on the show, Comvault Systems. Uh, this is uh, also looking good here. Up 2.9% today to 5870. Uh, I know I have a weekly chart here, and let's take a look at a weekly chart for Comvault Systems. There it is. This is a, a company that um, makes backup and recovery, archival, storage management software. Um, but you can see a breakout several weeks ago, over 53.80. And you could call this either support at the 10-week moving average, clearly, or it's just a nice little base on base pattern forming here. Uh, either way, you could see a new breakout in shares of Commvault uh, soon. Uh, excellent technicals here. Uh, 
good fundamentals, but not great fundamentals. I mean, this is a, a, a another well-run company. You're not talking about a company here that's growing at 40, 50 percent, but good steady growth in recent quarters. They are scheduled to report earnings October 30th. Earnings up 17% from a year ago to 28 cents a share, with sales up 19% to 115.6 million. Uh, Comvault is in an industry group where we're probably going to continue to see uh, consolidation in, in coming months. So um, industry groups like that are always worth paying attention to. It's sort of in a you know this. Uh, d- a fragmented industry groups like Commvault, uh, it's where you tend to see a lot of M&A activity. So uh, Commvault acting uh, pretty well here. And uh, hey, we got to check in on shares of uh, Salesforce again. They're, they don't report earnings until mid to late November, but another uh, interesting uh, technical setup here. You've got a you know, swing point of. Uh, just under 162, it looks like. Salesforce working on four straight gains here. It is up nine tenths of a percent to 155.50. Another setup here that has to be uh, respected. This is uh, not so much an example of support at the 10 week moving average as it is just a, a big possible base breakout taking shape here. So let's. Um, take a look here at Salesforce at a weekly chart and you'll see this is what's known as a cup with handle base so you had the start of the base uh, here back here in uh, March uh, April comes down corrects down to about 120 125 bucks a share works its way higher and then for the past uh, four or four plus weeks it's been forming the handle area notice that volume has quieted down quite a bit that's just what you want to see in the handle area, the swing point here is 161.90. 161.90. So CRM still has about six points to go to get to that swing point, but another technical setup here that is worth uh, paying attention to. Lululemon is in another similar setup here. We'll start at the with a daily chart first. Really like the fact that volume has dried up in this stock since uh, since last month, pretty much, holding nicely above its 50-day moving average. Lululemon outperforming up 2.1% to 75.49. We switch over, take a look at a weekly chart for uh, Lulu, and this is uh, actually a very nice cup with handle pattern forming with the high point in the handle area being 78.97. And... You know what? You're talking three and a half points underneath that uh, swing point. This is uh, tight orderly trading. Anytime you're evaluating a, a base, you want to, you know, the the less volatile the price swings on a weekly chart, the better. And this is actually a very uh, nice handle area here that's been forming for about five weeks or so. Notice the tight trading, uh, respecting the ten week moving average. Uh, Lululemon looking uh, pretty good here as well, and then. Uh, Alta Beauty at last check. This this one hit an intraday uh, low today, but rallied uh, rallied back nicely. Let's see here. Yeah, I haven't checked and see if there was news, but this one hit an intraday low of 91.85. I'm not sure if that was a bad tick or not, but it has rallied all the way back to its uh, session high. Uh, currently trading around 98.14, up three percent on the day. Don't like this chart nearly as much as I do uh, as much as I like Lululemon, especially due to the volatile trading uh, today. We just got done talking about how you want to see kind of tight orderly trading, and uh, today is an example of uh, what. Uh, th- th- it is not tight orderly trading today. Big, huge intraday price swing here for uh, Alta. So technical picture a little more in question than it was uh, earlier this week. But another well-run uh, retailer here that uh, that has a chance to to work here. Weekly chart for Alta Beauty is. Uh, you know, again, not too bad here. Swing point of 103.52. Uh, some call this a late stage base. In other words, the big money has already been made here. So, uh, if uh, if you are a buyer on a heavy volume breakout over 103.52, this is uh, probably a case of caveat emptor. Buyer beware, because this could be a late stage base where uh, the big money has already been made. Still, technical picture doesn't look too bad. All right, we'll put the finishing touches on today's show when we come back. Back in about uh, four minutes or so, you're listening to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve with you. We'll be right back. 
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m., and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Major stock indexes uh, strengthening into the close here with about five minutes left to go in Tuesday's session. Tech stocks still outperforming here. NASDAQ up one and a quarter percent now, almost 38 point gain to 3102. 
The S&P 500 shows a gain of 1%, up about 15 points to 1455, and the Dow up 126 points, 9 tenths of a percent to 13,550. Mentioned earlier in the show that uh, there's a little bit of volume behind today's move, not much. Uh, NASDAQ and NYSE volume tracking about 5 to 10% higher than what we saw during Monday's session. Volume uh, pretty light in the market yesterday, 613 million shares traded on the New York Stock Exchange. NASDAQ volume Monday totaled 1.53 billion. Uh, mentioned the presidential uh, debate coming up uh, tonight. That'll be fun to watch. Uh, we've got some economic data coming up tomorrow. Housing starts building permits for September. Uh, more housing data later in the week on Friday with existing home sales data for September and uh, sandwiched in between that on Thursday, weekly jobless claims and the latest reading from the Philly Fed manufacturing uh, survey. After the close today, we'll take a look and see what Fortinet has to say. Fortinet makes network security hardware and software. This is uh, a stock. Expectations may be low here. You can see it uh, uh, recently corrected from about 28 bucks a share all the way down to 23. Stock is down a penny today to 24.74. Looks a little bit vulnerable here ahead of uh, earnings, especially its 50-day moving average here. Potential resistance at 25.53. But Fortinet does have a a decent record of uh, earnings growth and uh, earnings this time around expected to come in at 14 cents a share up 8% from a year ago sales up 17% to just over 136 million take a look at shares of Dow component IBM acting well ahead of earnings out to make it three wins in a row here for IBM up nine tenths of a percent today mostly in line with the Dow uh, last trading around 210 at 72. Uh, earnings expected to come in at $3.62 a share, up 10% from a year ago. Sales down at 3% to $25.4 billion. But uh, IBM is uh, in a good technical setup here, uh, not showing anything in the way of uh, sell signals. And also, uh, big tech bellwether, uh, Dow component Intel set to report earnings after the close. A lot of people saying the bad news has been priced in here. Intel has just been decimated by uh, institutional selling in recent months. It is uh, up 2.8% today, outperforming nicely, uh, last trading at 22.34. Uh, Intel lowered their sales outlook on uh, September 7th, so uh, this could be a case of uh, under promising and over delivering I guess you could say uh, earnings expected to come in at 50 cents a share down 23 percent from a year ago with sales down seven percent to 13.23 billion also interested to see what intuitive surgical has to say after the uh, close today uh, big move for shares of intuitive surgical up four percent twenty dollar move upward for ISRG Last trading at $533 and a penny a share. Earnings expected to be up 15% from a year ago to $350 a share. Sales up 20% to $534.9 million. Uh, this was a stock also looking vulnerable ahead of earnings, but a uh, uh, little mini breakout today for ISRG ahead of uh, earnings. Uh, before the open tomorrow, keep an eye out for reports from Abbott Labs, strong price performer Bank of America, PepsiCo, Halliburton, and U.S. U.S. Bancor. That's it for today, folks. Thanks very much for tuning in. Coming up next, the Tom O'Brien Show. I'll see you back here tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern, for another edition of Breakout Investing.